Okay. Oh. Oh. Any. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Adriana Barnes, and I'm part of the book club for Why Are All the Black Kids Sitting Together in the Cafeteria? Hey, everyone. My name is Casey Hill, and I'm part of the book club for Why Are All the Black Kids Sitting Together in the Cafeteria? Hey, everyone. My name is Ashley James, and I'm part of the book club for Why Are All the Black Kids Sitting Together in the Cafeteria? Hi, everyone. My name is Billie Jean Adams, and I'm part of the book club. Why are all the Black kids sitting together in the cafeteria? Overview. Why are all the Black kids sitting together in the cafeteria is an extremely well-written and insightful book written by Beverly Tatum on the many topics that express humans' individual development with a environmental impact, the mistreatment of people of color and why the cycle continues, and the importance of awareness and educating younger generations in order to help them learn themselves and be better people. A little bit of background on the author, Beverly Daniel Tatum. She is a clinical psychologist. She also earned her BA degree in psychology from Wesley University a MA and PhD in clinical psychology from the University of Michigan. She has an extensive experience in research and racial identity development. She also served as the president, president of Spelman College and she retired on July 2015. In 2013, there, she was the recipient of the Carnegie Academic Leadership Award and the 2014 recipient of the American Psychological Association Award for Outstanding Lifetime Contributions to Psychology. Her focus was as an author, lecturer, and expert on racial identity development, and her website is www.beverlydanieltatum.com. Children see one race. When kids are little, that's when they start to notice how the skin tones don't match um, and they're pretty very vocal about it. And a lot of the times adults don't really know how to handle that situation. A quote from the book is a kid asking, is my skin brown because I drink chocolate milk? Um, kids don't really necessarily see or care about the difference in skin colors. And in middle school is when everything begins to change. Why are all the black kids sitting together in the cafeteria? And this is when the change begins. And one, there are reasons that they are sitting together and that's to support each other. The likeness of different cultures and different skin tones will sit together and a sense of security. They have that pack of sitting together and being of one culture in, in each table that they set. Speaking out, anyone can interpret an offensive joke, challenge stereotypes, or offer assistance to someone who is being harassed or in fear that they might be. If you don't know how to best to be help, how best to be helpful, ask and then listen. Use your own privilege to question policies that are discriminatory. Be public in your support for those who are targeted so they will know where to find help when it is needed. In a time of darkness, we all have to generate more light. Tatum, page 297. And Tom's, uh, in my opinion, I believe that it, it is a major problem of like our, I would say past generation, because mm -hmm. we would, always discriminate each other and talk about the race or like separate from each other not sit together like in the book the black kids are sitting away from the, the other race because they only see their own they only see their only skin tone and that's who they want to sit with and you know that was always just a problem back then but now we have we tried we have tried to you know restrain from that so I mean 
now we're doing pretty good. And that's my take on skin teams. I agree. I feel as though um, as they grow up, they become more comfortable with their own skin tone. I mean, people who share their own skin tone or color. And I also think that initially as kids, um, they view skin color innocently, but that changes as they grow older, depending on their background and their, envir- their environment that they live in. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, and one thing, I'm sorry. No, you can go ahead. Okay. The one thing that I found interesting is that when Tatum, she talks about the skin tones and she'll talk about the color coded language of society when she was explaining to her, uh, her child. And she says that the color is like the, the colors in the box that people don't realize yeah. that they're incorrect because white people aren't really white. Um, Asian people aren't really yellow. Um, American Indians aren't really red. We all have melon mm-hmm. in our skins. And if I go out in the uh, sun, I become brown. So we, the skin tones is just the different types. We are all one human race. That's true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, um, I always thought it was really crazy how people were really discriminated against just because of their skin tone. Um, um, I think that if everyone, you know, starting from like elementary school, if we were all properly educated um, in school, at home, you know, wherever the case may be, um, that racism would probably be something that we wouldn't even talk about today. Huh. Uh, I think things will be a lot different now if people really like brought awareness to it as as we grew up. Yeah, yeah. right. Way different. Yeah. Losing and reclaiming your identity. Loss of self identity, psychological effects are low self esteem and lack of confidence. Um, that's like saying you are a. When you're confused about your identity, that's like someone being Asian trying to basically live as like a white person and not really integrate themselves within their own culture, within their own race. They're, they will completely integrate themselves into another race. Um, regaining your identity involves getting in touch with your culture and your race. Um, what does self-identity mean to you? To me, self-identity is just being and feeling comfortable in your own skin Mm -hmm. and knowing who you are and, um, and the type of person you want to be, especially if it's, um, especially if you have a skin tone that's subject to racism and prejudice, Mm -hmm. I feel like it's really comfortable. I mean, it's really important to get comfortable in your own skin. Definitely. Mm. Right. I I definitely agree with that. And self-identity is very important to me because like you, that example you gave with the Asian, you know, integrating their self as a white person, I feel like me as an African-American, I should just stay I should really just embrace my race and just, you know, live off of that. I should not just try to be something that I'm not. I mean, that's definitely not something that you would want to do in your life. So that's how how, uh, self-identity is important to me. Right. Yeah, I feel that self-identity is is who you are Mm -hmm. and it makes you stronger to be able to stand up for yourself and your race and your culture so you know trying to put that mask on and be in something that you're not it, you're headed for um psychological problems and mental stress and i think it's a road that that you people should not go down so self-identity i think uh is very important i agree with you um, when I think of self-identity, I think of something personal that everyone pursues to find 
But like you said, some people tend to get caught up in things such as social norms and social trends, and they they find it hard to learn themselves or even truly find themselves at all. Mm. Concerning chapters eight through 10, these chapters apply to psychology of adjustment and mental health literacy because identity is a major factor of both. A quote that I find interesting from the text is, she felt sad about the lack of validation, yet she was also resigned to the fact that there would always be a chasm between her self-identification as biracial and society's identification of her as Black. One thing I can say that intrigued me the most about this chapter is how Tatum explained the one-drop rule. The one-drop rule was a rule that stated the racial categorization in the U.S. and at one point of time, pure Negroes were distinguished from mulattoes. When the one drop rule was institutionalized, that made the mulatto category to be dropped and considered that you were considered Black if you had an ancestry of Black. The author mentioned how some of her white students were afraid of their own ignorance, afraid that because of their limited experience with people of color, they might ask a naive question or make offensive remarks that could provoke the anger of the people around them. I understand why why people would feel this way because racism is not something that they typically have to experience and racism is not something that is talked about often enough. According to Dr. Tatum, Children will try to fit in with their white peers by adapting to anything that, um, by abandoning anything that is symbolic, mark them as other, not white, such as speaking Spanish or wearing a haba. We must teach our children to be proud of their culture and know who they are to have a vibrant life. Conclusion. Concerning the book overall, I think this book was a really great read that made me aware of things I never noticed before, especially concerning development. Being in a group also helped me to view things from different perspectives as well. If I could take anything away from this experience, it would be to no longer ignore ignorance concerning myself and those around me, because Tatum and many others have made it evident that change in action is needed on many fronts, and that all starts with awareness. I definitely agree with that. I I I really do because like like you said, it's it's with me too. Like being in a group mm -hmm. so helped me to see how y'all feel about the race thing and how she um how she talked about how we are all one and not yeah. everybody is just separated. Cause mm -hmm. I, I also like to I like to hear everyone's perspective on it because it gives me a, a better, how would I put it, a better uh, understanding of, yeah. you know, what she is talking about and just not really, I don't want to just have my opinion. I want to understand how everybody else feel about, you know, the book as well. Definitely. Okay, uh, so I actually initially did not think I was going to like this book, yeah. um, but it actually turned out to be really good and really educational for me. Mm -hmm. um, like you guys said, being in a group allowed me to hear different perspectives and opinions about a lot of the things that we read in the book, especially um, the, especially the um, a lot of the racism that was mentioned in the book, mm -hmm. it was nice to hear everybody's different uh, takes and opinions. Mm -hmm. um, I guess what I say I learned from this experience is to really try and educate the people around mm -hmm. me sure. so that maybe, you know, like they decide to go educate somebody else, and, yeah. you know, maybe they go educate somebody else. And they just spread. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I think one thing that I personally took out of this book is not to take off my blinders because being, being white, I did not realize that there was 
how deep the racism was that is and you know is continued and that we all need to come together and I think her book opened my eyes to that fact that Mm -hmm. you know we are all one group and that we all need to be together and Mm -hmm. you know if if you do have, and I think she mentioned in her book that if you have any privileges at all, is to mm-hmm. use that for the good, to bring mm-hmm. out the racism, to teach others, to come together as one. And I think that's what she's trying to, to say is that we all need to come together as one, one race and one people and one, one togetherness. For sure. Mm-hmm. This is our reference page where we got all our information and I hope y'all and I hope you all enjoy watching our presentation. And again, my name is Casey Hill and my members and co <laughs> colleagues, you know. So yes, and our presentation. Thank you everyone.